when you came to Atlanta, how was how was your entrance into the music business? Because everybody knew who you was, and y'all had a lot given to y'all early. Like, how the fuck did that happen? It's interesting you say the word given. Well, I but mean, nah. you had no, no. What I mean by that is like no. you guys. Like my my thing was that you guys had everything that the guys who had the big hit, like you said, the waterfalls. You had what they had. You had the same opportunities they have. Some people had to fight for those opportunities. Well, they, well, they had it because they had hits. Um. Originally, my deal that was offered to me was for a house and three cars. I opted to with LaFace, right? Mm. Uh, like a mansion, like LA offered me a house and three cars. So I took the money, wouldn't sign to LaFace. Mark negotiated so I wouldn't sign to LaFace, but he said, we'll pay you back. But we won't be signed, and we built Red Zone. And that's the beginning of the relationship of the power. Because even though we didn't have the hits, because when I came here from L.A., I was coming off of Shantae Moore, Immature, Brandy. Like, it was, like, I wasn't driving no projects. These guys is driving revenue. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, driving revenue. Like, I'm, like, check to check, month to month. Like, you know, but at the end of the day, Mark was just like, yeah, we don't really want to be signing nobody. But whatever that money was that you were going to give for that mansion, <laughs> let us get that in that building that we live in and that we work out of. That's the same building. And at the, that was the most important move that we ever really made. So you got the production read from L you got the production deal from LA Reed, right? To do red LaFace. zone. I mean, LaFace, yeah. sorry to do red zone. Right. Is mm -hmm. that what you're saying that they initially offered you the cars and the house and then you was like, no, matter of fact, give me some cash and I'll start my own thing? Is that... Well, no, Red Zone was already formed, but as far as Red Zone being a place that people pulled up to that had a perception, like, for me, it was always very important, like, coming up in this industry, being a producer meant... One of the main things it meant is you had a place. Mm -hmm. Like, DARP was a place. Yep. So So Def was a place. Yes. LA and Face had a place. Yeah. Flight time. That's... That's the distinction. Noon of time. Noon, noon time. time. Yeah. Yes. Noon time as well. I always I forget about noon time sometimes because they were my direct competition. Yeah. Like direct competition because the other guys were like out of my league in a way. Yeah. Like the the, month, the numbers that Dallas Austin was putting up at the time were so massive <laughs> that um you know like going into the studio because me and him like Dallas is probably in Atlanta my closest friend mm -hmm. like, as far as the Atlanta music scene and just being around him was completely intimidating at the time like great I it was it completely in it completely intimidating like he had every keyboard at every microphone everything um that you could possibly want to make a record with and so but when you went in the studio, he would keep the cases on the front. Yeah. Because that's how secretive sound selection was. Mm. That you didn't, if some, another producer came over, even though we was friends, he was like, put the cases on. Yeah. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, oh, he uses this sound. He uses this keyboard. It was like everything was secretive, you know? And everything was like a culture of competition, like all the time, you know? So it was just, it was a different time in that, you know, I think, I feel like the last person that I really had that relationship with that I love so much is Polo, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of where, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road on everybody that wanted to fucking knock your head off for a hit record. Yes. <laughs> After that, everybody was nice. Yeah. They started sharing the sounds and shit. Yeah, I wish I could have got my hands on the Neptune sounds and Timberland sounds or Jermaine Dupri sounds. Like, nah, it wasn't possible. Damn, they was hot that. and they was sucking the sauce. They yeah. was like, I, yeah, Polo, I Polo, Polo, shout out to Polo. He's always known, been known for like opening and like sharing. Like, no, 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 not with me. Oh, first was conversation I ever have a Polo. Polo called me up the first time <laughs> I ever talked to Polo. He's like, Yo, you use my fucking snare, bro. <laughs> <laughs> first thing, like, I mean, no, our funny. first conversation was heated. You know, like, I was like, What makes you think that I need to use your sound? Don't you Ooh. rap? Mm. You know, <laughs> I just throw that, so I just, yeah, 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 I just throw that in shit. there. You know.